Hey everybody, it's Bethany Drew here. Um, it's 7.30 on a Saturday night and my boys and my husband are watching Forged in Fire downstairs, um, which I watch every once in a while with them, but I'm more than happy to be up here. Um, just thinking, of, I've just been trying to think of different ways to um, keep stamping since um, I can't have people over for classes and stuff right now. So I know there were a couple of people who said they might join me live. So anyone is welcome to come do this. And even if you come later and watch the replay, you can stamp later with me too. Um, if you find me here later, that's fine too. Um, I'm, I'm just so excited. This is kind of a, a virtual get together. So I'm hoping a few people join me. Um, I'm going to show you a double wonder class. So if you have lots of designer paper that you've just been, you know, either hoarding or just haven't known, haven't been inspired to get it out and cut it, cut into it, I'm here to help you with that tonight. Um, and there are so many, if you look up double wonder or one sheet wonder, there are so many different ways to cut up designer paper so that you can make multiple cards. Um, and I've kind of tweaked a double wonder class that I did with um, my friend Shannon West. Um, but she inspired me to do something like this with other people too. So um, while I'm waiting for people to come on, I'm just going to review because I did tell you what you needed. Um, but let me turn it around and we'll talk about the things that you need. Now, I'm going to be using um, the Forever Blossoms and the Parisian Beauty uh, stamp sets, little little bits and pieces. Um only for background stuff. So I'm gonna show you how to step up um, your cards if you wanna step it up a little bit. Um, but if you only have a couple sayings, that's really all you need is a couple sayings. So if you have a favorite, this is one from uh, The Free as a Bird. Hey, Chris. Thanks for stopping by even if you're just watching. <laughs> um, this one's from Free as a Bird. Your friendship means the world to me. I love that saying. Um, so if you just have a couple, couple sayings, you're the joy of my life. This is life is a magnificent adventure. I'll be using that from here, and I will use some of my other ones too. So all you all you need is a fun saying that you want to send to people. And I just thought now is a great time to be sending cards and sending love to people. Um, so I'm just showing you what I'm using. Um, but if you have a whole stamp set that with those sayings, it's fun to use some of those stamps. So I've got my uh, Eiffel Tower and the blossoms out there in case you want to stamp a background and step it up a little bit. Um, you can do that as well, but it's not necessary because I wanted to keep it really easy. Um, now I'm using, because I'm using the Parisian blossoms um, set and that designer paper, um, whenever you get any designer paper at the bottom, it tells you what colors match with this designer paper. So I have some petal pink, pool party, and white, whisper white uh, designer paper, or not designer paper, um, cardstock ready for my bases. And I have a couple accent things and cherry cobbler. I've also got on hand, and again, if you wanna keep it really simple, all you need really is some black ink, but I've got my, mo my Momento Black ink ready to go. I've also got a few of those coordinating colors in case I want to use different colors. So I've got Cherry Cobbler, Pool Party, and Petal Pink. So again, if you want to keep it very basic, all you need is black ink. I've also got my Whisper White craft pad that I'll use. I'll show you. Um, and then I'm also going to be using my Petal Pink, the metal edged uh, ribbon. So I've got that. I did just get these rhinestones. Uh, those are just fun little accents. And I also am going to show you how to step things up with a, with a big shot. But again, you can do all these cards without a big shot. You don't need to. So these are the, I just wanted to show you Forever Blossoms, Parisian Beauty. Uh, the stamps that you, and images, a lot of them that you see are going to be from uh, these two sets. Um, so things that I told you to get ready. So I already have pre-cut and scored. I think I've got eight here, so, and I, I think I said crumb cake is a great base too. Even, no matter what colors you're using, the crumb cake is a great neutral to have as a card base. So I've got two crumb cake cards, two pool party cards, two petal pink, because those were some coordinated ones, and two white 
Um, so I know that doesn't add up. Uh, out of the two pieces of designer paper that we're going to use, you actually can make 11 cards with me. But I'm probably only going to make um, eight or so, but I'll show you how to make each of them because some of them will be kind of be, be the same design. So if you have some pre-cut, and again, for beginners, if you have a piece of cardstock, um, this started as one sheet, eight and a half by 11, and you just cut it in half, and a half of sheet of eight and a half by 11 is your card base. And again, I, then I've scored it at five and a half. So the width would be, um, or the length is gonna be five and a half, and the width is four. Hey, Barbara Ann. I've missed you at my lives. Fun to have you visiting. Okay, so you need some card bases, eight to eight to eleven, depending on how many you actually want to make with me. And you need your two sheets of designer paper. Now these, um, again, it's so fun because the designer paper in our catalog never looks as pretty because it's just like jewelry, especially when it has foil and the fun stuff like this. It doesn't shine like it does live. Okay, so um, I chose the Parisian uh, Blossoms or whatever that called, uh, beauty designer paper. And I wanted to make sure that all the sides kind of look good together. Um, because there are some cards that you'll use because using two different pieces, you've, you've got four different designs to work with, right? Um, now this one doesn't really matter how I've cut it. Um, because the flowers could be facing anywhere. So I wanted to just show you quick. Um, if you have, if you started with a big 12 by 12 sheet, you want to cut it in half at six inches. So the, what I'm showing you is six by 12 sheets. So you want to cut it in half this way so you can see um, the birds up and down um, when you're holding it horizontally, that you can see the birds going up and down. So. That's just kind of important if you've got designer paper that has some design that you want to see it going the right direction. So cut it this way so you can see it when you're holding it horizontally, if that makes sense to you, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> all right, if you're really, oh, and then if you have one punch, if you want to keep it simple and you just have a circle punch, that's fine. But a uh, a punch or something and again if you want to step up some of your cards with a big shot die that's fine too but I will mostly be using this pretty label punch um, it's a fun one that fits most things okay so I've got my card bases I've got um, I also had told you ahead of time so hopefully some of you cut these pieces ahead of time to have um, five or six um, and I said black and or white, so I've got black and white pieces. Um, these are, will hold our three strips, and I'll show you how to cut your designer paper very soon. I just want to make sure more people come on before I actually start cutting or anything. But these pieces are three and a quarter by five inches. So they will fit right on the card front, and then we'll place our designer paper right inside there. Okay, and I have some black because I'll show you. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm going to show you ahead of time um, so you can see with this was the uh, bird ballad suite. So I'll show you. I am showing you. I'm going to show you different ways that you can make. So we're making three cards three of the cards that you can make. Uh, the strips that we'll cut will actually cut into um, squares. So you can use four squares. Um, and so using the same four squares, I, this one's up and down and I used my birds as a background. So I showed you a little bit ways to step it up a little bit if you wanna stamp some background or even stamp right on your, uh, your little sentiment. I used different kinds of ribbon. I told you just have one kind of ribbon, but you can step it up and use different ribbon. This one just on a white um, white card base, very simple. I just popped up the squares with dimensionals for that one, so they're a little bit popped up. I miss your face. And this one I went uh, in a different direction on the crumb cake, and I just put some ribbon behind it. I taped those right down instead of popping them up, and I popped up my sentiment, the world needs more of you. 
Okay, so you'll you'll get to make three of the ones that have four squares. Two of the designs will be um, will look like this, where we'll have you'll get to use two bigger pieces and then one for the middle. And here I've showed you not adding ex any extra, just I did a row of ribbon and put my designer paper down. And this one I did use the nested label dies, but I stamped with my white craft on the black, sending hugs. So pretty, so very pretty still when it's simple. And here I showed you, this is our script embossing folder. And again, I will show you in one of the cards that we make um, with my Parisian thing, how fun it is to add a little extra texture with our Big Shot. But again, you don't need a Big Shot. I will just be showing you different ways you can step up your card a little bit. And this one I used that pretty, pretty label die and popped that up. This paper I love is so pretty, isn't it gorgeous? Um, I, I'll be sad if they retire this paper because it's so pretty. But I did get, I think, two packages of it, so it should last me a while. Um, now this card, um, you, you can technically make six of these, so double of what, I, what I'm showing you. Um, and this is again where you'll use, um, this is the card that you'll use these pieces behind. This one I did a black background and that really pops out the designer paper, doesn't it? So that's where I showed you black or white. Um, and you can put your sentiment wherever you want, really. I really wanted to be able to see all the birds because that was so pretty. So I put this one off to the side. This one I kind of put right in the middle. And I just put the ribbon behind there. And if the, you can tell this one, and I'll show you doing it this way too. After I taped down the designer paper, I actually put the whole uh, white piece in my brick, uh, my brick embossing folder. So that's a fun way to step it up when you have the big shot. Hey, Jen, I see some love from you. And uh, and then this one, I used a different punch, um, and I just did it the basic way, put those designer paper on here, popped up that whole piece, and I put that lower again because I didn't want to cover up the birds at all. I put it lower. Um, so there's just three examples using the different paper. So these, these are things that you guys are going to be able to make um, very simply just using designer paper and the pieces that I had you um, pre-cut which hopefully some of you pre-cut them um, just to tease you again a little bit um, this is showing you with different so no matter what designer paper you get have again crumb cake is a great basic I used the tropical timeless when I did this with Shannon West she did some similar cards um, and I used some coordinating colored cards for the cardstock for the bases and I made them look similar, but I stepped them up in different ways. They used different ribbon. This one I added a little rectangle behind that too. Okay, so there's different ways you can step up your cards, but if you want to keep it basic, you can totally do that too. Um, <clears throat> oh, and in this one where we had the two pieces, this one was a little larger than the one Shannon did, but I added the pineapple behind after I decided what pieces I wanted to use. I did that later. Um, Oh, and a couple of the sayings that I will be using are also from the Free as a Bird stamp set because I love these. I love the world needs more of you. Yes? Um, can I get some more gum? No, you already had a piece today. You only have one more piece left. Okay? No? Yes, Dad. I'm doing a live video. I knew they weren't all going to stay down. My four-year-old still wants to come up and ask me questions about candy. Okay, so I, I did want to show you those cards. Thank you, Penny. Um, I wanted to show you those cards before we get started, and now that a couple more people are on, um, let's start our cutting, okay? So you're going to take your designer paper now, and hopefully you have a paper trimmer cutter. And again, you'll want to cut both your pieces, your designer paper. So now we're starting with a 6 by 12 sheet of designer paper. And you're going to cut both of them in the exact same way, Okay. So easiest way I can explain first with our 6x12 piece is we're going to cut at every 3 inches first, okay? So holding it this way, horizontally, we're going to cut it at every 3 inches. <clears throat> so 
So I'm gonna get my paper trimmer out. And if you haven't seen, sorry, this is gonna be a little bit crooked just because I want you to see it. This is our newest paper trimmer. This is um, the score tool, so I'm coming up from the bottom with my cutting tool. Okay, so I wanna line it up and I'm gonna cut it at every three inches. And I want it to be pretty exact here, okay? So if you want to start cutting with me, you're cutting it every three inches, the designer paper. Again, hopefully some of you come on and you can stamp later with me. Hopefully a couple people catch the replay and stamp with me. Because I'd really love you to show me what you've created after you guys make some of your cards. Okay, so I've just cut them all at three inches. Now while we're thinking three inches, let's just do the other piece. Because like I said, we're doing the exact same thing. So cut it just at every three inches. Again, I, I simplified and I'm doing something a little bit different, different than what Shanna did. So I'm still cutting at every three inches. So I'm lining it up to three inches and cut. I like this new <clears throat> paper trimmer. I do not have to press down hard at all to cut. Just glides right down like butter. Okay, now we have them all cut into three, three inch pieces, okay? So, now with these, um, so with these three inch sections, I'm also going to cut um, in half at three inches as well. Okay, so I'm, these are six inch pieces. We're gonna cut it in half at three inches. And we're gonna do that to how many of them? One, two, three, four, five, six. You just wanna save, save two of your pieces, so one each, um, and put those asides, aside. The other pieces, so you've got six other pieces we're going to cut now in half at three inches, okay? So three inches, three inches. So these are little, literally we're cutting into three by three squares right now. Three by three. <clears throat> Am I going too fast? Is anyone actually stamping with me or are you just watching? <laughs> and I'm boring. Did any of you bring snacks? I'm trying not to eat a whole lot after 7.30, so I do have a little bit of dark chocolate with me and some water. And if I really get hungry, I'll maybe get take one of my peanut butter balls that I made that are supposed to be pretty healthy for you. Okay, so last one cutting into just three by three. All right, now all of these three by squares, you're eating pizza, and that's fine, Jen. You can totally eat whatever you want. I, we just made burgers. We had burgers and tater tots for supper, so it's not like I'm, I'm not whole redoing everything I eat. You know, I still have boys who need to eat, so I'm gonna eat normally for supper. <clears throat> I'm just trying not to eat a whole lot at night. Little things, okay. Now we've got these three, three by three squares and we're gonna cut these in half now. So each one of our three by three squares, we're cutting in half. Um, if you have paper, um, you know, that it depends on which way you cut, just make sure you can see um, that it's going up and down the way that you cut it, okay? So that it makes sense. Hopefully that made sense to you. All right, so now half of three is one and a half. So we're cutting 
these squares into one and a half. Oh shoot. So I won't use that one. Make sure. <laughs> make sure you've got it at one and a half. I'm talking and looking, trying to look at people's comments when I should be paying attention to where I'm cutting. As you should do. Okay. It looks a lot better when you cut it directly in half at one and a half inches. Okay, so all these squares we're cutting at one and a half. So right now we're doing just kind of the back lay work before the beauty and the real fun part comes. So you're getting a little glimpse if you're watching. These are things that I do and I pre-cut for you when you come to a class. So I pre-cut all these pieces for you so you don't have to do that. <clears throat> one and a half, still one and a half. We're getting all of our pieces ready. Again, like I said, if you can't stay the whole time, put at least a couple of them together so you can remember what the layout is with me. If you're just coming on, I just want to uh, reiterate, we had our horizontal six by 12 sheets. We cut them into three inches, each one of them. Right now, I'm cutting um, and then we cut uh, the three by three squares we're cutting into one and a half inch pieces. So I'm lining it up at one and a half and cutting all my pieces into one and a half. We're getting close. So hopefully if you're still eating, Jen, you can, you just ask me if, if anyone comes on later and you say, um, just ask me, Bethany, I need to look at the layout to see how to cut out the pieces. Just let me know and I can kind of try to go over that with you. Again, we're just cutting one and a half by three pieces right now. Seriously, I'm starting to crave actually seeing people. It's so nice to have a couple of you visit virtually, but um, I'm really missing seeing people. In fact, I went for a walk with my sons to the park and back. And uh, on my way back home, I saw my sister-in-law, Trisha, and she was with one of her best friends. And I started chatting, and um, I felt kind of bad that I... Um, I started just talking away because I just I haven't seen other people other than my family for a long time that I know and I just wanted to talk forever and <laughs> she's like we only have so much time together <laughs> I was like oh sorry um okay so we've got I don't know why one looks like it's a little taller than they should all be the same size why do two of mine that's a mystery to me There's always something that goes awry when I try to do live. <laughs> I have no clue why two would be a little bit taller. All right. Um, okay. Now, the two pieces that I told you to put aside, so we've got three by six pieces here left, um, we're cutting a little bit differently. So that these are going to be the t for the two cards um, that you had, the bigger pieces of designer paper. And then this... Um, last little piece is the strip you'll put in the middle. Okay, so it's two and a half by two, two and a half by three um, squares, and then one that's one by three. Okay, so that means we're moving it to the side, our six inch side, because all of these are by three inches. Okay, so you're moving it horizontally so you have the six inches and I said two and a half two and a half and then that leaves us with one inch strip okay so we're cutting this at two and a half another two and a half and 
and that leaves us with a one inch strip okay and we'll do that to the same or the, the same thing to the other side here So two and a half, I hope I'm not going too fast for people here. You just let me know if I need to reiterate anything. Two and a half, another two and a half square, two and a half by three. So I guess the technically that's not a square, it's a rectangle. <laughs> and then you get a one inch strip left over, okay? So put those to the side because they'll, you know, if you want to mix it up, You'll be able to kind of choose which sides and which way you want your designer paper to go together. And you can kind of choose which, which ones. Hopefully all of them kind of look good together. Well, maybe I'll use that side as the middle. That's kind of fun. Okay, so these pieces are for two different cards, but let's start with the ones we've got the majority of. Actually, we'll do a little bit more cutting. While we have our paper trimmer out, you are gonna take um, I think it's two of each. No, maybe three. I love our design the designer paper. It's so thick. I love it. Um, okay, so now three of each design, three pieces of each design, we're now going to cut into one and a half inch squares. Okay, so right now we have a one and a half by three inch. Now we're going to turn it horizontally and you're going to cut it at one and a half inches. And this will be the one that we will use um, like I showed you we'll use the little squares and and do a different layout thanks Jen so pretty just the just the paper is pretty isn't it okay so one and a half inch squares is what we're making now I tried to do pretty easy cutting so it's not too complicated so none of the measurements are too crazy all right, so now we're making one and a half inch squares, three more. So with this design, again, cutting at one and a half. And I think when I was doing it earlier, I wasn't really paying attention to where I was cutting and some were a little bit off. Yeah, you guys have never done that, have you? Like I just did earlier. Okay, so three times three is nine, <laughs> right? Little math. Um, so these little squares will make three of our, um, or 12. Yeah. All right, it's a six, six times three. Well, I should not be doing math right now. Okay, so all these little squares we just cut up are going to make three different cards. Okay, so we will put those off to the side and I think we'll use these strips first okay so I think we've done all the cutting we need to cut yay put the paper trimmer away and let's start putting some cards together you guys ready Are you excited all right, so I don't know. What color should I use as a base first? I think I'll use Pool Party. We'll see how that looks. Although the crumb cake looks awesome with everything, too. Hey, Rhonda. Yay, I'm glad you joined me. Okay, if you just joined, um, and I, Rhonda, I know you have tons of designer paper that you can cut into. We started with a 6x6. Six 
or not six by six, six by 12 piece. We cut them three inches, three inches, three inches. And then with those three, uh, three by six, I cut them into three inch squares, just three of those pieces. And then we've cut um, all those pieces, the three by three into one and a half, one and a half by three inch pieces. Okay, so two different, if you had started with two different designs, that means we've got four different kind of designs to look at. Okay, so you can kind of mix and match. And this is where I will, um, this is where you're going to want to take out one of your pieces that hopefully you pre-cut. So again, if you didn't pre-cut and you're racing to get your trimmer right now, it's five by three and a half. Okay, because these are three by one and a half pieces. Um, so this is cool because then when you line up these uh, pieces of designer paper, let me straighten this out a little bit. Um, when you line up these pieces, it's just a fun thing to have matted um, on the side. So I'm going to show you, I'll make one with a white background and then I'll show you I'll make one with a black background um, and see how different they look. So this one I will um, put on the white. Now as far as glue goes you can have double-sided tape. You can use some snail. You can use Tombow glue. Um, Tombow glue is fun because it's pretty forgiving. Um, now, if you see as I line these up, you have about the same space on the side and the top. Okay, so I'm going to start from left to right. Do it however you want. And I'm just going to put one at a time. The only thing about the Tombow glue is... If you do get it on your fingers, other things start getting sticky. But if you're careful with it, let's see, do I want the pink in the middle or the blue in the middle? I think I liked the blue in the middle. This is where it's kind of fun to mix and match all of this designer paper. Make sure I get my corners. I'm just going to leave that open. Jen, are, are you eating at me? Or are you actually, are you stamping with me? Or we're not really stamping yet, but crafting with me. Do you have your designer paper out? I hope so. This is where I hope that you see just getting that designer paper out, cutting into it. Oh, there's so many fun things you can do with designer paper. I mean, it's great just as a regular background. Okay, so all those pieces fit in there, just so pretty. Um, if you want to tape down the whole thing, you can. I like popping mine up. What's that mean, Jen? Are you actually crafting with me? <laughs> so I'm gonna put a dimensional in each corner, and then I'll put one in the middle for safe measure there. If you have a hard time, if like you don't have nails, just pressing in the center of your dimensional usually helps take the backing off. Just a little tip, if you didn't know that. And these dimensional backs are things I find all over the house. Stuck on my clothes, then I find them in the kitchen, I found them, find them on my stairs, I find them all over the place. Now, you could center it, but I like putting mine up just a little bit so there's a little bit more space on the bottom. But again, it's your card. It's your design, and you can put it wherever you want. You're just watching 30 ways. Okay, well, Rhonda, you can you can watch this, the replay, later and actually do it with me. In 31 days, that's awesome. I'm retired. I'm so excited for you. How fun. You'll have plenty of designer paper to cut up and play with then. Okay. So on the white one then, I'm going to take, and I think I to told you or warned you, just have a lot of, I have lots of white and black scraps. 
Um, and I'm just going to punch out a label. Um, and this one I will just stamp in black. Um, let's see, what do I want to do? I kind of like, life is magnificent. Life is a magnificent adventure. It's an adventure right now, people, isn't it? Got to make, make life exciting. Life is a magnificent adventure. How fun. Um, now I definitely do want to add some ribbon and there's different ways you can add the ribbon. I'm going to add some of this and I don't know how many inches that is. Five inches or so. About the length of your, your white piece. Um, and this is the same ribbon that matches in that whole suite, which is fun. And it doesn't really matter where I put put it. Um, now, if you wanted to just put a little double-sided tape and stick the ribbon down, you can use that. My favorite thing to use for ribbon is our glue dots. Um, I just love our glue dots so much. Because you stick them down, and it really holds um, ribbon well. It's like already made, um, you know, like with a glue gun, a little dot. Okay, so I put three glue dots down. I'm going to put this one right in the center. And then I'm, I want to pop up my sentiment. So again, dimensionals are your friend. I'm going to put one at the top and one at the bottom to kind of put right over the ribbon. And we'll put that right in the center. And da-da! One card already made. Yay! Isn't that pretty? And, and pretty simple. Right, gals? All right. Now, with the next one, I'm going to show you how to step it up a little bit. Um, let's see. Let's do the... I'm going to do pool party next. Now I'm going to get some scrap paper out because I'm going to show you making uh, making a little bit of a background. Actually, I'm going to keep it open so it doesn't keep popping up on me. Which one should I use? I'm going to use color on color. I think I like the little one with the um, Eiffel Tower. It's kind of cute. <clears throat> Okay, so this is another way to step things up. So if you have coordinating color inks with your stamp, so again, if you don't have it, that's fine. You don't have to do something like this. But if you, the sentiment that you choose, um, if you have, if you brought a whole stamp set with you, yeah, isn't that stamp cool? Uh, I think I'm gonna stamp and then stamp off. I'm just stamping all over the place. All right? No rhyme or reason. Because it's just our background. But isn't that fun? So cute. So you're kind of making your own little designer paper background when you use a stamp for the background. Okay, so this one I'm going to use <clears throat> a, one of my black three and a half by five pieces. All right, so I'm going to show you. Now, we're, we're covering that up a lot, but that still shows through what I stamped up here, right? So it's fun. Let's stamp just the top so that still shows through. Okay. <clears throat> so I know we're covering up a lot of what we stamped, but that's fine. It's still a fun background. All right. So because I've got a black background, I kind of want the Eiffel Tower one to be in there. And because it's pool party, we'll keep the pool party one in the middle here. 
Now already, isn't it fun to see how that looks um, on the background with white and then how it looks like with black? Very fun. Okay, so I use Tombow glue. I'm gonna show you why my usually my go-to is my snail adhesive um, because I'm gonna show you how much faster <laughs> I stamp at least when I have my snail. Instead of, you just, the snail is just a little bit less forgiving. So once you get it down on your paper, you just, like, before I actually press down, I want to make sure it's lined up right. Before I commit to actually pressing on it. Woo, isn't that so fun? I love those flowers with the little foil in it. Aren't they so pretty? So pretty. See, you don't have to do a whole lot to dress up a card, I'm telling you. All right, this one, I'm going to, I have a bunch of black scrap too, and because I've got a black background, I'm gonna stamp my sentiment. And this really only works if you have like white embossing powder, or you have the amazing Whisper White craft pad. It's more like paint, so it's thick and it takes a little longer to dry, but it's awesome. I'm gonna put on this one, your friendship means the world to me. Again, this is from the free as a bird sentiment. So I'm just tapping gently on the top because these are really squishy, the ink, the craft ones. And I'm gonna stamp that right in the center. Wipe that off. And people, if you have not invested Oh, I just grabbed a whole bunch of stamps there. Did not mean to do that. Um, to get that out of the way. If you guys have not gotten a uh, Stampin' Chamois yet, these are amazing. They're awesome because I find my I clean my stamps uh, more frequently when I have um, the Stampin' Chamois. And it fits right in one of our stamp, the CD cases. Or if you just have an old CD case, it could fit in that. little plug for that. See, isn't that pretty? With the white, it's uh, subtle. The craft pad is a little more subtle than... Um, now, if you wanted to, you could just put some snail on the back and then just pop up the... Um, pop up your sentiment. It doesn't really matter. What was that? I don't know. Okay, gonna line that up in the same way, a little bit higher up top. Oops, that one. why does that look a little crooked? Does that look a little crooked to you? Or my my eyes just playing games on me? Again, this is where that's a little better. Okay, maybe it's just one of my strips was a little crooked. <clears throat> All right, I think I'm going to do the same, use my same ribbon about five inches, a little less even, and use some glue dots on it again. I'm just going to put it under. Now you could be tying a bow if you want. I like the simplicity of just it looking underneath. In a straight line underneath my sentiment. Take those backs off. Let's see. Let's put this one a little further down. Again, it doesn't really matter where you put it. Put a couple dimensionals on the back here. I don't know why I'm sweating. This is not really a workout, but all of a sudden I feel really warm. I don't think I should be nervous. It's only a few of you with me here. 
Isn't that pretty? Any love? Anybody still there with me? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, how fun is that? Just the difference between um, backed on black and then backed on white. So pretty. I like them both, don't you? Thanks, guys. Thanks for the love. Hopefully at some point, I know some of you are just watching, I hope at some point you get, actually get some of your designer paper out and do this. Do this with me, even if it's later. Um, okay, we did... Oh. I can't believe I just did both pool parties. I didn't realize that I just did the same, the same color. <laughs> oh dear. Alright, let's see how it looks on crumb cake. Let's see. I hate covering up the flowers because they're just so pretty. But maybe we'll do that once. Maybe we'll put the Eiffel Tower in the middle. I don't know. Thank you, Chris. It is fun to do these. And it's fun to, like, actually know you're using your paper, too. And, again, I've been sending... I think just in the last two weeks, I've sent out 20-some cards. Whether it's birthday, just thinking of you friends, friends that I miss. Um, yeah, I was going to do that. So if any of you friends wants to send me a gift, um, I could use more stamps. <laughs> Post-it stamps. Not rubber stamps or photopolymer stamps, but post-it stamps. Because... I've been sending out a lot, a lot of cards, and I love sound, sending out the paper hugs. I really do. But my postage stamps run out pretty fast. In fact, Kelly Blackwell, if you're still watching, that was such a sweet gift. I loved it, and I have used all those. Because she sent me a card, and she had some little post uh, postage stamps in there and I thought that's a perfect gift for me because I love sending cards love it so don't even think about gift cards people August 5th that's my birthday if you want to send me a gift send me post postage stamps that will make me happy <laughs> I'm easy to please people um, I mean you could just send me a card too you don't have to send me stamps just saying it's easy to pack in a... all right Let's see, I'm trying to think if I want to stamp a background on this one. I think I do. I think I would... What do you girls think, those of you who are still here? Should I stamp the flowers in the corner, or should I stamp the Eiffel Tower, like, going off the side? Because remember, it covers, covers up most of her. What do you girls think? Eiffel Tower or the flowers? I mean, whichever one I do, I'll do the other one on the other card. <laughs> Any thoughts? I'm trying to think. Which one I want. I know, flowers are so classic. Could be for anything. All right, Chris, you're the first one who commented. Flowers, oh, Jen said flowers too. All righty. Hmm. I think I'll actually even stamp them in the, because there is cherry cobbler in those flowers. So let's ink it up in cherry cobbler. Oh, Kelly, yes. I love receiving cards from you guys. In fact, some of you are my best card senders, and it just makes my heart so happy. Because, yes, I love sending them, but... um. 
part of that reason is because I know how much I love receiving them too. It's, it really does feel like a hug, doesn't it? It does to me anyhow. I really do love all you girls. That's pretty in the, I think I'm going to do it the top too. See, this is where you can have fun and play. Um, this is where you can get creative and make it your own. Because depending on what, you know, if you chose the tropical one, you could be stamping some pine pineapples in the background. If you chose the bird set and stamp or sentiment. Ooh, that's fun. Just in the corners there? I think I like it just in the corners. Wipe this one off. Sometimes on bigger stamps, I'll just take my chamois out and wipe it off like that. And that works too, to get it clean. Love the chamois. Can't tell you how much I love that too. Oh, thanks, Jen. I feel the love, ladies. Seriously, it's so much fun. I'm so glad at least a few of you. I know like Shannon West got like 200 or 300 people to stamp with her. And I'm really content just having a few of my good friends with me. So nice. All right, I'll do another black background. Oh wait, I already had these down. <laughs> um, okay, so that'll go right over it. I really do like it popped up. This time I'll just do four. Yes, Chris, you love the chamois? Seriously, no lint on it, you just, Re rinse it and squish it out at the sink when you want to kind of kind of clean it, but it's gonna stay sane. But it's awesome. Let's see. I think I will kind of put this more just in the middle because I don't want to cover up too much of the of the flowers in the corners. So fun. Um. I also have this the tailored punch. Let's try one of those. I feel like I'm probably going to like the pretty label better in most cases. But every once in a while it's fun to mix up your shape or your sentiment. Okay, because I stamped the flowers. I think I'm going to stay to stamp it up still. So, but, um, Kelly, you're asking about the big shot. Um, Stampin' Up! does not have a die cutting machine right now, but so excited to tell you that a new one, and it's going to be wider than the original because they, um, Stampin' Up! is no longer, um, what do I say, partnering with Sizzix, so they are making their own die cutting machine. It's going to be wider than the other one. Um, I'm so excited for it to come out. I can't wait. I think they're going to try to have it come out around the time of the new catalog. Um, so the new catalog comes out in June. So I think somewhere in June or July, they want the new their new die cutting machine to be available. Which is exciting, isn't it? All right, now I'm gonna show you, yes, yes, I'm gonna get it too, even though I already have two big shot. <laughs> it's gonna be wider, it's gonna be better. Okay, now I'm gonna show you another way to step up your sentiment. Especially if you guys are just, if you have black and you're stamping your sentiment in black. Um, I'm opening up my petal pink, which is another one of the lighter pinks. So you just want to stamp a lighter color. Because this color is so light, I don't need to stamp off. Um, and I'm going to stamp that like right over just the corner. So it's very subtle, but it's fun to have a little um, extra something. You could also have stamped off and used, you know, the corner of your flowers over it too. Now, let's see. I was using a lot of my, the beautiful lace trim that went with the, the birds. I think it would look good with this too. Try some of this lace trim. I really love this scalloped lace trim. It's so pretty.
This again is in um, the same suite as the little birds. Now because this is kind of see-through, I'm putting my glue dots kind of right at the tip of the scallop. I'm just going to put a couple on this one. The ones that are closer to where I'll be putting the sentiment over. So just two glue dots. Or the other ribbon I've kind of been putting three pieces on. But it'll hold it. Let's put that right in the middle. And again, I'll pop this up with dimensions. I, you don't need dimensionals. You could tape it down. But I really like making things pop, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> now, if you think that's too subtle and you want to add a little bit, I was going to say... You could add a little bit of sponging around. So I could use my same red before I put this down. And just take the corner of my sponge and sponge around the edges. I kind of just scrape down the edges so you don't get too much. I'm not even going to re-ink it. I just want it to be a subtle little border. So, again, sponging is your friend if you want to add just a little bit more depth to your saying. And look, that just adds a little bit more. A little bit of depth to that saying. Isn't that pretty? See, you like how I just stepped it up with just a little bit in the corners? Um, could someone tell me my time? How am I doing on time? Um, because I think I might switch, now that you've got an idea of how to do, um, that design with the three, I think I'm going to switch to another one of our designs. I don't want to take too much of your time. Oh, it's already 829. Oh my goodness. Ladies, see, that just is proof that time flies when you're having fun, right? <laughs> um, Okay. So let's do one of our white card bases and I'm going to show you how to step up. So let's get our other pieces that I set to the side here. I'm going to get these pieces that I set to the side. And I've got the little Eiffel Tower thing that's going to be in the middle. Now, you could just put these these pieces down if you wanted, and you don't need to put any background. But I'm going to show you, if you have your Big Shot again, there are ways there are ways to really fancy up your card quickly. One of the first things that I fell in love with, with the Big Shot, was our... Um, embossing folders. So I've already got a piece of, this is the cherry cobbler, so it's one of the coordinating colors. Um, you just put that in your folder and then this is one of the 3D dynamic ones. So you just need your Big Shot platform and you don't need a cutting pad down with these thicker ones. You just put your folder down and then the blue plate on top. And there's a new blue, newer blue plate. If you haven't, haven't got that one, it really is um, valuable to have. And then I'm just going to run it through my Big Shot. I'm sorry I didn't take you with me to my Big Shot. but And then you just take it out of your folder and voila! Isn't that a gorgeous folder? I love this one. Oh my goodness, so pretty. Again, this folder comes with the whole suite I'm using in the Parisian suite. Okay, so I'm going to lay this down as an extra layer to add a little fun. Okay, so I'm going to put some dimensionals in the corners. Pop that down first. And yes, you're covering up 
a lot of what you've embossed, but it still adds beautiful texture, which you just, it's just so awesome. I love it. Let me set that down so I can line it up. also the nice thing about not putting a million dimensionals down on a big piece because I can line it up straight before I commit to setting it down all right let's see what a, uh, no I wanted this now I'm rethinking how I want to set this up so I want it to go that way. So I want it to go... No, not like that. See, then these are your only challenges. It's just, just trying to decide which way to make your designer paper go. <laughs> um, I think I like, because I'm going to use an Eiffel Tower too. So I'm going to show you even more ways to... Um, now, because I, I really want to show off the embossing, I'm going to move this up a little bit, and I'm going to have, actually, I'm going to put this piece on the top. See, you guys are seeing all of my mental process here. Even though it's simple and uh, laid out, there's still a little bit of planning and thinking you want to do when you're thinking, where do I want to set these pieces? But not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to put this at the top. And I put that down first because I want to cover up, I'm going to cover up this so I can move it up a little bit because I want to really see some of that embossed. In fact, you know, before I put this down, I'm going to show you even some more magic. I should have done this before I put down my... But I'm going to sponge a little bit over the bottom corner of my embossed cardstock. When you sponge over the cardstock, it brings out all those little... embossed parts so it just kind of brings it out I don't know can you see that how it just made some of the embossed parts darker and I feel like that kind of just made it a little bit more antique -y. I don't know okay I'm just gonna put three on this piece that'll hold it plenty Just realized I haven't had any of my dark chocolate. This is another reason I love stamping because usually when I'm in my stamping room, I really don't think a whole lot about snacking. It's a great place to be. I love it. Okay, I'm just going to since I already have lots of dimensionals. Throw that down in the middle. Okay. How fun is that? And before I put my sentiment down, again, these are awesome reasons to have a big shot. This cool Eiffel Tower die, cut out this in black. We're gonna add that. So again, you don't have to have a big shot and you don't have to have dies, but uh, when you do have something like this, oh my goodness, doesn't that add like ah, 10 times of fun? besides just keeping it plain. So just showing you little things that you do, that you can do to make it pop or for somebody special. I like that they've got enough little places that you could put some of your glue dots to stick it down. You could also use a sponge on some Tombow glue and sponge over your whole um, your whole die cut image but this is the lazy person's way my way <laughs> is the glue dots let's see I'm going to put 
that over kind of to the corner. Isn't that so fun to add the dye on there? So fun! And back to our pretty label dye. So just another, and because I've added the, the Eiffel Tower dye, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't think I really even need any ribbon on that one. You still, by all means, could. Where did my... Oh, here it is. I'm going to use the Life is a Magnificent Adventure again. If you have people who love to travel or friends that are going on trips someday after all this is craziness is over, can you see me stamping over here? Yes. <clears throat> Stamp that in black. Um, yes, the Pretty Label Punch is um, a pretty perfect, beautiful punch for all these little sayings. All right, just two dimensionals down on this one. And guys, friends, oh my goodness, in just, well, tomorrow, it'll be three days, but in four days, we're going to see... Um, the retired lists of what is retiring of the spring catalog and the annual catalog. I'm slightly nervous, but excited. Isn't that so pretty? Aww. I'm giving myself my own love. Um, yeah, so cool. So with, an, with a big shot, I'm just showing you simple, simple ways to um, step up your card. So that dye and embossing stuff behind it add so much more. Thanks, Chris. I know, isn't that so pretty? Love it. But let's do the other one. We haven't done a petal pink one yet. Let's do petal pink. And I'll show you um, we won't put any extra dyes, but I still will maybe I'll still oh, where'd my petal pink go? Here. Now I'm going to stamp the Eiffel Tower. Oops, sorry, if you lost me for a little bit, my, my battery said it was almost dead. We're almost done. I'm just going to show you one more card after this. Because again, oh my goodness, time just flies when you're having fun. Okay, so I'm going to stamp this one off in the corner. Very subtle because it's color on color and it's a light, light pink. But isn't that pretty? The little Eiffel Tower on there. And then, let's see. Yeah, we'll do this on the top. And here, I won't even pop these up. I'll just pop up the sentiment. Okay, so... I just have my petal pink. I'm putting this down first. Then this one. This one's going to go a lot faster because I didn't do any embossing, but still the embossing goes by pretty fast. Um, I put that little pink strip in the middle. See how much faster that went? And then we'll do another another white label. Or should I do a black label? I'll do another white label. Um, I think I'll do another Your Friendship Means the World to Me. And we'll just ink that up in black I love that saying the free is a bird all the script in these oh my goodness they're just gorgeous I really hope the free is a bird stamp set is not retiring yet I haven't had enough time playing with that one it's so beautiful Thanks, ladies, for those of you who've stuck with me here. <laughs> um, 
Oh, I didn't add any ribbon underneath. So why don't we try? I just cut even less than five inches, maybe three and a half, because I'm just going to tie a little knot. So just trying to show you different ways. Trim that down. Doesn't have to be very big. Different ways to add ribbon. And then we could just put a little glue dot on that. <clears throat> I'm telling you girls, these are things that keep me sane in the middle of the insanity. And I love my boys. I love my husband. I love that I have a family and I'm not alone. Um, but I still really miss people. See, isn't that so pretty? And it looks so different from the other one we made. See, so same design, you can make it look totally different, right? Um, there, that's, that's the fun of this too. Um, with the same, thanks for the love, Chris. I love you guys. You guys make me feel, feel so good. Okay. So that was, that was with my Parisian. Um, here's the ones that I made with uh, the bird ballad suite. Again, different colors, different um, punches or dies, sending hugs, the world needs more of you. Um, they look like different cards and you've used the same, the same setup. So fun, isn't that? The last one that I showed, or the last one that I'm going to do with you, I know I miss hugs too, Jen. Can you feel my hug right now? Uh, bear hug. Bear hug for me. Um, I miss your face. I miss all of your faces, like in real life. I really do. That's this. I miss your faces from one of the um, Celebration sets. So if any of you got that, this is a perfect saying to, you could put it in the inside of your card. I think I'll put it on the inside of a lot of my cards, sending hugs and just say, I miss your face. Um, so the last design where we cut out all those squares that we set aside, where did I set those squares aside? Um, now you can use all four sides So, I want two of each. And usually, I'll tell you in most of mine, let's see, let's do another crumb cake. Usually when I'm spreading these out in four, um, here, let's go up and down. I'll show the popped up. I usually don't go up and down with the busiest ones. I try to keep them kind of diagonal, if that makes sense. So the busier ones are diagonal from each other. So you kind of keep the busy. And then I kind of think, okay, I'm going to have the saying in the middle, so I want, I don't want to cover up too much of my foil, so I'm going to move that one up to the corner. I'll move those. So this bigger flower isn't covered at all. And that's where hopefully if you cut them right at one and a half by one and a half, it won't matter which way they're going. And I will just pop each, I'm going to put one dimensional on the center of each square. Another thing, ladies, that I hadn't done in a long time, um, I stayed up really late the other night. I won't tell you how late, but I, uh, I actually, <laughs> and if I showed you around my room, you'd be like, what? That doesn't look cleaned up. But seriously, I, there were some bags and boxes that I hadn't dealt with since we moved two and a half years ago. And I've been cleaning through stuff, throwing away things. Man, I really hope by the time the new catalog comes out and I do some kind of sale, because I'll have a lot of things to give away or sell, 
I hope all of this is over and I can have people over. One, because I'll miss them, but I have a lot of things that I can, that I want slash need to get rid of. Okay, so how fun is that? Just pop those up with dimensionals. <clears throat> and then punch out your label. <clears throat> it is it is sad to me. I feel especially sad for like all the seniors, um, people that are missing all their final, I don't know, prom and graduations are going to be just different this year for all the seniors. So I've been praying for, I have friends who have seniors this year and just hopefully that makes all these senior people just stronger and appreciate all the things more. Because I know I would be pretty bummed if my son, this was his senior year. So I feel bad. <clears throat> All right, what do I want to do? I think I'm going to tie a little bow knot with my lace trim for this one. For the lace trim, I usually like to twist it in a way so that both my the trim is going in the same direction. So you can ma manipulate it so it's twisted in the right way. And then I usually, it's fun when they're scallops because I'm like, okay, I've got three on this side, three on this side. And then I can pop that right underneath. I think I'll do that. Or do I want it? No, I'll put it underneath. Okay, so I'm just going to, actually I'm just going to throw one in the middle of all these and pop that right in the center so it's not actually popped above all the squares they're all kind of at the same length put one more glue dot and voila you have one of your square cards I was gonna show you so life is a magnificent adventure send Send that to someone. I love, crumb cake is such a good um, basic color. Okay, I lied, I'm gonna do one more. You guys don't care, right? <laughs> um, I made a three and a half by three and a half square that I could put some in. So, let's see what we can do with that real quick. Oh, because I wanted, I did want to show you, and I'll show you with this one. I was going to show you with a different one, but this one works as well. Um, because I wanted to show you again how to step up. Um, let's have that one go this way. When you have your embossing folders, you can emboss over pretty much anything. Where's my snail? So I'm not going to put dimensionals on this one. Let's see. What? a good amount of space. I'm just going to put a little bit of snail on each one of these. Try to center them the best I can. Pretty flowers. Let's see. I want it that way. And then this one. up and down as well. Okay, now I'm gonna take this whole piece that I just put them all down and I'm going to again throw that underneath my embossing folder. Okay, so I'm gonna run this whole thing through the big shop.
pull it out and voila isn't that fun then even over the design um, that embossed is so cool now if again if you want to step it up and make it look a little antiqued um, let's see soft suede is usually my go to So soft suede is one that I like to sponge with. This is my last card, people. Just warning you. <laughs> so you don't cry. No. Okay, so I'm just dipping that on my ink, and I'm going to sponge around kind of mostly the corners. So not the whole thing. I don't know, I might might get sponge happy and go over the whole thing, but I need to cut some new sponges. This one I've used a lot and I think it's coming apart. Alright, I lied. Yeah. We're just gonna go slightly over the whole thing. Now, that even brings it out even more. Isn't that fun? When you sponge over what you've embossed, it's so cool. Isn't that so fun? All right, now, because I've embossed over it, the dimensionals really are the best thing to use. I usually don't want to use snail on a piece of cardstock that I've embossed because there's so many ridges in there. So the dimensionals are the best to get that down. Put that down. Actually, no, I lied. Let's see. I want to, this could go for me or against me, but we're going to try it. I'm using the cherry, yeah, I'll use the cherry cobbler on the petal pink. I'm kind of going a little bit like a pattern here. We're going to cover up most of it, so it's really okay. I love that little thing, too, from the Parisian Beauty set. I'm going to keep that open because I'll stamp. See, if something looks too plain, just... Well, I'm going to put that further up because I got a little thumb mark or something on there. Then you just make a background. Fun? All right. So last. Last thing. We'll just punch out with our pretty label punch. I think I'm going to say sending hugs on this one. Because I'm doing it on black, I'm going to use my Whisper White craft again. Saying sending hugs. Tap, 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 tap. We'll put that right in the center. Almost done, ladies. Thanks for those of you who stuck with me. I appreciate it. And those of you who didn't really stamp, come back and stamp with me on the replay. And we'll just do a quick knot with the ribbon that actually matches. So I'm just tying a knot. If I can get it through there. I'll 
trim it down just a bit. Put a glue dot on it. Where did my glue dots go? Oh, there. Okay, after, if you have stamped with me, one, let me know. And um, write in my the Drew Daily Stampers, post a picture of your cards. It's always fun to see what different designer paper, what it ends up looking like. So sending hugs, a little bit of ribbon on the side there. It's always fun to add a little bit of something that's not paper. So ribbon or, um, but don't you love the foil in it too? So there's this one of my, uh, one stepped up in a little bit. That's the simple one. There's with a little bit embossing and stamping a background. Sending hugs. So sending hugs to all of you. I miss you. I miss your faces. Um, I really can't wait till I can see you guys again. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your time with me. Thanks for visiting so much. So again, if you make all of the cards after cutting, because I have one more set of paper to that, you can actually make 11 cards with what I just showed you, um, how to cut your paper. With two 6x12 sheets, you're making two of those cards that have the bigger pieces one on top of the other, three cards that have three little one and a half by one and a half squares, and six cards that have the one and a half by three pieces that you put in a, in a row of three, which is 11 cards that you can make out of two six by 12 pieces of designer paper. So double wonder, so much fun. Um, I hope that you enjoyed seeing it. And I can't wait to see some of your designs. It's a couple of my bird ones, a couple of the Parisian ones. They are so much fun. Life is a magnificent adventure. Send hugs to people. I hope this encouraged you to just make cards and uh, really don't, don't keep these around. Don't hoard them in your house. This is the time to make a few of these cards and actually send them off to people that you love. Um, this is the time, if not now, when, right? So send the love to people. That's my challenge to you. Um, even if you don't send all 11, how about send at least three cards to friends in this coming week? So today's Saturday. So I'm saying Sunday to Sunday. So let me know if you sent at least three cards. Um, in fact, I will throw, because I love you guys so much. Um anyone anyone who gets back to me and says that you sent at least three cards this week and I, so I will check next week that means um, I will send you a sampler of and I, so I will pre-cut these these are six by six right now I will pre-cut them so that they are four by five and a quarter um, so they would fit right on card fronts that's easier for me to fit in a in a card for you then too. So I will send you a card with a few sheets of each of these colors of this ging, it's all gingham. This was from like last year, but I got, I think I still have a whole extra package. So I'm gonna share with you guys. But all you need to do is send three cards to three different people that you love. Tell me that you mailed them um, and maybe show me a picture. So take a picture of a couple of those cards before you send them post that and you'll get a little sampler of some gingham paper from me. Love you all. Have a wonderful night. Thanks for stamping with me or just coming by. I really appreciate it. So enjoy your Saturday night. Um, enjoy worshiping the Lord tomorrow, uh, wherever you are at home. Um, if you don't have a home church, Liberty Bible Church, um, I'm part of Sacred Ground, but Liberty Bible Church does do, we have a Valpo campus, we have Sacred Ground, uh, Laporte campus, and they all do a Facebook Live showing of worship and then a speaker. So there are places you can go to worship, um, even on Facebook. So have a good night. Thanks so much for coming, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.